Imagine a world where the most advanced stealth fighter never made it past prototype, yet still haunts modern air power debates. That was the Northrop YF-23 Black Widow II, a jet faster, stealthier, and potentially deadlier than its rival, the F-22 Raptor. But it was never built and never exported. Now, almost four decades later, analysts are asking, could a platform like the YF-23 ever be offered to Israel? And what would it mean for Middle East air dominance and global geopolitics? Let's unpack this complex story. In the late 1980s, the U.S. Air Force launched the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program to replace the aging F-15 Eagle and counter-Soviet fighters like the Su-27 and MiG-29. Northrop's YF-23 and Lockheed's YF-22 emerged as finalists. Both flew in prototype form, but only the YF-22 was selected, becoming the iconic F-22 Raptor. The YF-23 was a radical design, a sleek diamond wing, twin buried engines, all aspect stealth shaping, and a low infrared signature. It prioritized evasion and high-end survivability over close-in dogfighting, aiming for beyond visual range dominance and sustained supercruise, the ability to cruise supersonic without afterburners. Despite outperforming the rival in stealth and speed tests, it lost out primarily because the Air Force chose the YF-22 for maneuverability and lower development risk. The service also leaned toward the thrust vectoring control and existing logistics advantages of Lockheed's design. Two YF-23 prototypes were built, but neither became operational. Today, they are museum pieces, haunting reminders of what might have been. So why did this advanced stealth platform never become a frontline fighter? The answer is a mix of doctrine, risk aversion, and institutional culture. At the time, the Air Force still valued dogfighting capabilities, even though air combat was rapidly shifting toward network sensors and long-range engagements. The YF-22's aggressive marketing demonstration flights and perceived downside risks gave it the advantage in the selection process. Additionally, introducing a radically new platform would have spiked development costs and logistical complexity at a time when post-Cold War budgets were tightening. The USAF ultimately chose what it saw as the most balanced candidate rather than the most innovative. The result? The U.S. gained an incredibly capable fighter in the F-22, but production was capped at fewer than 200 units, far below initial projections. And perhaps just as importantly, a once promising export option vanished with the YF-23. Here's where the story gets truly geopolitical. The United States has historically placed strict export controls on its most advanced fighters. A 1997 policy formally banned the F-22 from being sold to any country, even close allies, largely over concerns about sensitive technology proliferation. Israel, despite being a strategic partner, would not have been exempt. The same export logic would apply to a YF-23 like platform. Fighters like the F-22 and YF-23 incorporate highly classified stealth shaping, sensor fusion, and mission systems. The US simply refuses to let that technology flow freely for fear that once hardware is in foreign hands, secrets can leak to peer rivals or be reverse engineered. This is the core of modern fighter export politics. Even with the F-35, the US's widely exported fifth generation fighter, access is selective. Israel is one of the few nations allowed to operate and modify its F-35I Adir jets with locally developed weapons and software. This unique flexibility is part of a deliberate policy to safeguard US technology while maintaining Israel's qualitative military edge, QME. Today, the Israeli Air Force is widely recognized as one of the most advanced air forces in the Middle East, largely thanks to its fleet of F-35 Ayadir stealth jets. These aircraft deliver cutting-edge sensor fusion, stealth, and electronic warfare capabilities that redefine air superiority in the region. Israel's F 35i configuration includes custom electronics and weapons integration that even the U.S. Air Force does not standardize, a rare concession demonstrating trust and operational partnership. 
Moreover, recent developments in Middle East fighter deals, including potential US F-35 sales to Saudi Arabia with downgraded capabilities, illustrate how sensitive these air power balances remain. In essence, Israel's tactical edge is tightly governed. Export control and QME policies ensure that even if regional rivals acquire modern fighters, they cannot match the capabilities Israel wields without U.S. oversight. Now imagine a world where the YF-23 could be revived, upgraded with modern avionics, weapons, and sensor fusion, and offered to a partner like Israel. Technologically, such a jet could deliver extreme stealth, super cruise, and long-range strike capability. It might excel in beyond visual range engagements and penetrate complex air defenses. Many analysts today argue that YF-23 design principles would suit future sixth-generation fighters. But geopolitically, offering a next-gen fighter like the YF-23 to Israel would require major shifts in U.S. export policy, technology transfer safeguards, and regional diplomacy. The U.S. would need to balance Israel's security needs with wider global stability concerns and the risks of provoking an arms race in Asia, the Middle East, and beyond. Such a move would not only transform Israel's air power, it would reshape air superiority equations across multiple theaters, from Tehran to Beijing. The YF-23 remains one of aviation's greatest what-if stories, a fighter that could have redefined air dominance, yet never entered service. For countries like Israel, the real question isn't just could they have it, it should the world even share such technology? The answer lies deep in geopolitics, export controls, and the global struggle for air superiority in the 21st century. The YF-23 was never just a lost prototype. It was a vision of air dominance that arrived too early for its time, too radical for the doctrine of its era, and too powerful to ever be shared. And that's what makes the question so compelling today. Not whether Israel could operate a fighter like the YF-23, but whether the world is ready for what such an aircraft represents. Because exporting a next-generation fighter isn't just about speed, stealth, or range. It's about trust, control, and the balance of power. It's about who gets to see first, strike first, and disappear without a trace. In the Middle East, one of the most contested airspaces on Earth, even a small shift in air superiority can ripple across entire regions. Israel's F-35s already sit at the cutting edge of modern warfare. But the ghost of the YF-23 reminds us that there are levels beyond what we see today. Aircraft designed not just to win battles, but to end them before they begin. And as sixth-generation fighters move from concept to reality, the design philosophy of the Black Widow may finally return just under a different name. So the real question isn't, why didn't the YF-23 happen? It's this, when the next invisible fighter takes to the skies, who will be allowed to fly it? And who will be left watching from below? This is RS Military. Stay sharp, stay informed, and I'll see you in the next one.